Gary Johnson then, pre Plymouth at home. Gary, the players obviously needed a bit of picking up after Tuesday night, but is, is that the sort of process that sort of starts and ends are, are straight after the game and today you just look straight forward to Saturday? Yeah, it does, yeah. I mean, they, they, they needed only a little bit of picking up because uh, when they get into the dressing room, they're not sure, even though they knew they'd put in a good effort, they're never sure what the manager's response is going to be when he when he comes in. So when you get in there, they're sort of all sitting there um, wondering what the manager's reaction is going to be. And my reaction was, lads, don't be down about it because that was a fantastic performance and was just one goal, three goals short of, uh, of being a very, very good performance against a, a very good team that's in good, good form in the first division. So once I said that, they all sort of go, oh, you know, like we, we can get home early for a change tonight. And, um, and then we start looking straight away f forward to the next game. And uh, the boys would have seen uh, the games that Plymouth have played, Liverpool over the last couple of, couple of, uh, ga couple of weeks or week or so. And uh, we know that they're first division in, in, in the making, for sure they are, because they got to the playoff final last year. And uh, they're up there this year in automatic places. They, they've got a real good run of form. They've got supporters turning up in their thousands. Obviously, they've got the finances because of obviously the gates they get, but also because of the uh, the FA Cup games that they've had, especially the two against Liverpool. So um, you know we we're hitting them on a when they're at their their sort of peak. Uh, and that's always good. I'll tell you why that's good, because uh, we're the underdogs. And sometimes, like they were the underdogs to Liverpool, but they still give a good account of ourselves. And uh, we, we have to do that. And I'm confident that our lads will, uh, will create a very, very good game for them. And if you've got to pick yourselves up after a game against Bradford, they've got to pick themselves up after everything they've invested against Liverpool, which mm. I suppose is actually a bigger job, and you've got 24 hours more. How yeah, important can that well, be? Well, there's arguments for and against, isn't there? You know, once you, if you're out the cup, then uh, they'll be thinking we can concentrate on the league. We're out of the checker trade trophy now, so we're thinking the same. Um, I just want to make sure that we, we, we've got a group that can compete. Um, and it is a, one of our biggest tests against Plymouth, just the fact that they've got first division players, because that's why they're at the top there, uh, that are going to go on and, and, and probably do well in that division as well, if they, if they do get what probably they deserve for the building of a team over the last two or three years. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to, to see where, where we are on, on that scale of competing to the next level. And that underdog status you talk about, which Cheltenham seemed to relish, did very well down at Home Park in the return fixture earlier on in the season. Yeah, we did. Uh, I think we had a great chance, didn't we, with Acer, was it, uh, on the day? Um, they scored it at the end of the game. And I don't think there was much between the two teams. But uh, they'll know that as well. And they'll know that uh, you know, they're not coming here to um, to have an easy game, if you like, and um, we mustn't disappoint them. Three changes you obviously had to make for Tuesday. Is it automatic that all of those players come back in? Obviously, Harry Pell's still suspended as well. Yeah, it's just uh, Harry Pell, of course, and the rest are available for selection, and I'll, I'll pick the team. Nobody automatically comes back in or goes out, or, but um, I've got a couple of days to think about that and uh, you have to look at Plymouth to see which players you think will affect the game against them more. Um, there's little little knocks and injuries that some of the lads have got, see whether that uh, sort of sets them back a little bit. But um, no, we, you know, when you, with the, the bigger and stronger your squad is, the more you're sort of happy to uh, go with whatever 11 that you decide to pick on the day. I asked Callum, question, uh, Callum Kitschke this question on Tuesday night, and I'll ask you as well. At what point did the players that you brought in this month 
cease to become new players and are just players who are playing for Cheltenham Town because some of them seem to be settling very quickly. Yeah, I think good footballers settle quickly. You know, they 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 take in everything. They they know what's going on, and uh, they they pick up the vibes from the team as to not just the tactics and the shape, but the the mentality of us, the personality of us, and we've sort of done our job before we brought those players in. We've tried to make sure that they'll fit in very quickly. So. Uh, they're the players we think we've brought in and time will tell whether they were the right ones to, to push us on. And of course you're at the bottom two. Presumably the aim is to sort of climb more places now and just sort of stop the having to look over your shoulder. Yeah, that's the idea. Um, what did we say last week? I think in the last interview I did say that we were going to set up a, a new league and uh, we're top of that league at the moment uh, on goal difference. I think Exeter, the other team that have scored three and um, got three points from one game <laughs> so it's a good start and uh, we need to keep that going if we can not necessarily be top of the league although that'd be nice this new league but um, you know we need to uh, stay certainly in the top sort of ten if we can to make sure that we keep out of relegation trouble still the January transfer window expecting any more business before the weekend um yeah, there could be. Uh, there's a couple of little things going on at the moment. Um, and uh, so, you know, we're just waiting. Every day is different, every day is new, every day there's a new inquiry to us, every day we make a new inquiry. So, you know, there's, there's plenty going on. Whether anything happens or not is, a, is another thing. Thanks, Gary. Good luck. No problem. Thank is that you. both in and Dave? Yeah, both. Well, it's mainly in because, uh, you know, the only out would be if. You know, somebody comes up to you from a current squad and says, I'm, I'm not getting enough regular games and I need, to, I need to go out sort of thing. But as I've said, I'm not consciously trying to get any of the boys that we've got right now out. I think we need, I think we need the numbers, we need the quality, we need the personality of the ones we've already spent time with. Um, it's good to keep most of them, if not all, around. But... Uh, it won't be our decision, yeah, that will be that will come from themselves, anybody who's not quite happy. Yeah, leading on from that, do you think that now your, your squad is stronger than at any other stage? Obviously, it yeah. probably stands to reason with the three, three, the six coming in. But Yeah, I do. I think we, you know, we've still got that one, one loan that we need, that we can use. Um, obviously, we can only use it in the next couple of weeks, so we just have to um, work hard with, with that one. And uh, you know we sort of know what we're looking for, what, what area we're looking to um, help with the numbers and the quality and all that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, that's the one we're sort of homing in on if we can. I remember speaking to you probably about sort of October time, and you you put down a challenge to the players to start sort of earning the form of putting the form in to earn new contracts. Mm. Are you even beginning to start? Obviously, you bought Carl and. We're boiling on eighteen-month contracts already. Mm. Beginning to plan for next year. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you thinking of, of of who you want to keep beyond this year from the current group? We're always thinking that way because um, you don't want to leave some of the lads hanging for the whole season. Um, we're into this, you know, January windows. You can sign them after the January windows, of course, the ones you've got here, um, and as they prove themselves, then I'll be having quiet words as we go on with the, the ones that I feel um, are going to make a difference to us for next season as well. So um, people have to be consistent in their game because no use having one great game and offering them a contract and then the next five they don't play very well so we need the consistency. So that might take a bit of time and some people are playing very well at the moment, that have, are playing the best they've played this season and, and others are not quite getting enough games even though they're, they've been great for us and, uh, and we need to, you know, that all needs to come together, they need to be playing, playing regularly, playing well regularly and at that point as a management team and as a club we, we will then start having a quiet work.
Are you watching the, the the Plymouth game on the TV last night, thinking, "Well, Liverpool have done this, Liverpool have done that. Perhaps we should look into <laughs> the, um, the, the goal from the corner, for instance, or yeah, things like well, that." Well, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, um, and of course we've got our own set plays, and they've got their strengths, and but you try and look for little weaknesses, of course, um, in the opposition as they will us. You know, that's the whole idea, and um, we're at a level where you need to know strengths and weaknesses, that's for sure. And funny enough, you need to know your own weaknesses so that you can you know, double guess anything that they, they might do. Um, yeah, the fact that they was on the telly, you can look at, a, they didn't have many set plays, to be fair, although they did score from the set play, which was very good. So we just uh, have to go through that. And they, I'm sure they've got others that they'll, they'll throw in because, uh, but they got some big lads, they got some big lads. and, and it was a very well worked uh, corner that Liverpool did against some big lads and you've got to be clever, you've got to be clever to uh, to break them down. Looking at the way they play, three big lads up front in, in Jervis, Garita and, and Slew, is this going to be the biggest test for your young defence so far? Yeah, I think so, so far. I mean, we've only, we've only played two or three games but uh, yeah it'll be a big test be a good test it's the one that I'm sort of looking forward to to see whether we uh, how we cope with it and uh, if we can't uh, get some possession be solid like we have been and uh, and create chances which we have done even against Bradford you know we we had chances to win that game certainly had chances to go into penalties um, but it wasn't the be on the day. Awesome. No problem. Here you go. All right.